Hello my soccer universe, <laughs> what a performance by Spain yesterday, really this was the most dominant performance that it was only a single goal against Italy it was flattering the Italians big 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 time but it's also a little bit of a takeaway from yesterday's action that you know goals are coming down and it's usually second match day it's the one where you start a little bit more tactically you know not all out because you don't have a free hit it means something to teams and so yeah we had only five goals in three games now we are below 2.6 for the first time so it has been a steady downfall there as well group c it's all level we had a dramatic Balkan meeting between Slovenia and Serbia with the latest equalizer ever at the Euros. And then we had another really drab performance by England. And at this moment, I really have to ask, is this a favorite? Is this really a favorite? They look tired. I think they're completely out of it in a way. Jersey matchup bingo. I got everything right, except I don't get Spain against Italy matchups. Yes, it has been relatively consistent that the nominal away team changes however i really thought there's enough countries if italy play in blue and i also really hate this italy away jersey so i didn't want to see it and that's the one i got wrong everything else and it was relatively straightforward i got right may i just say probably the most positive thing about england are those terrific shorts england in their classic kit with the navy pants and then the outline on the bottom is just was really looking very 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 nice much better than the team itself looked and it was a, a really beautiful matchup Denmark against England I gotta say overall because it escaped this monotone versus monotone template that is so forced now upon us and yes kudos to Spain for having blue shorts again with the yellow stripe it also looks quite nice let's go through it in chronological order Serbia against Slovenia or better the other way around in Munich and of course it was so loud you know that the diasporas of these are great I absolutely loved how you could see one end is very red not the Bayern end and the other end the Slovenia end which is the Bayern end was white but you saw some blue and green popping here and there which really should be Slovenia's national colors or should be featured in the flag at least get rid of the red put the green in there and I think you have something very very unique Slovenia just listen to me there the game it was in a way similar to the Albania Croatia match yesterday that the underdog had actually a whole lot more of the first half and probably should have taken the lead the biggest chance came to Elžnik the number 10 of Slovenia who hit the post and then on the rebound Sheshko has to do better but there were a few other chances created yes there was one by Vlahovic as well but Serbia again looked kind of sluggish uh, similar to Croatia what is it with those big Balkan sides and of course I need to mention that Serbia because of anti-Serbian chance by the Albanians and also by the Croatians especially yesterday already threatened if there is no action taken by UEFA they are gonna leave the tournament you're only gonna cut yourself this way also gotta say that but yeah uh, it's typical stuff from that region second half though Serbia was way more coming out way more going forward and had some good chances especially Mitrovic was very much in the picture there but Slovenia also had their chances but it was definitely against the run of play when Slovenia took the lead but it was a really nice action by Karnicnik who actually initiated a counter-attack he plays it over to Elžnik who then crosses it over the box and Karnicnik then just can tap it in and it's 1-0 Slovenia who were then really on the back foot Mitrovic having a glorious chance Karnicnik he was the player of the game I would say gets his boot in and so it's the Reflected onto the crossbar which was the greatest chance for Serbia to equalize and just when you thought that Slovenia is seeing it out there's a corner kick and Jovic who just came on got pulled on the shirt by Karnicic all the way this should have been probably a penalty if he wouldn't have gotten to the header and it went straight in and also big credit for his knee slide that was probably the best knee slide I've ever seen just full action full pride it's 1-1 a result that doesn't really help anyone let's be fair about that maybe Serbia a little bit more because they don't have a steep uh, task in England but you know speaking of England it was another really odd performance by England I cannot say it any way else again beautiful kit matchup and in Frankfurt the stadium was closed it was a great atmosphere all around you know you had Denmark you had England in there it's a replay of the semi-final from the last Euros and England actually had a little bit more of the game first action to Foden who pulled it over the bar I mean a great move but his finish is definitely better and then the other one was Carl Walker goes in 
puts it into the box and then through a few deflections it falls to Kane who can tap it into the net in the 18th minute as 1-0 England. At that point I would have said that England probably deserved the lead. Not that they were pressing but they were the better team because they had Denmark a little bit on the back foot. However then again England falling back. And you know there was no press happening at all by England. They were just passive. Absolutely passive and allowed Denmark back into the game. And Eriksen started to run the show. In the end, Hulman in the 34th minute takes a long range shot that beautifully finds his way into the net. And it should have been more. I mean, there were uh, chances that especially Eriksen created where England were struggling to stay in the game. Absolutely struggling to stay in the game. It went with 1 1 into the half time. Where seemingly the English staff said, well, maybe we should do a little bit of that pressing. And it showed early on again in the second half and they created a few more chances with Foden hitting the post. But Denmark also always had a little bit of a threat going. In the end the game petered out into a 1-1 draw that, yeah, leaves you really wanting. My personal feeling is that not only, and I guess this is the biggest complaint, especially by England fans, is Southgate a little bit out of his depth of how to deal with these high-class players, but we saw it already in the Premier League that many of these superstars, they actually feel quite tired, I have to say. And there is no urgency to the play. I mean, on the positive side, you have four points, so you're par for the course. However, when I see other teams playing, this England team seems a little bit too disjointed. And I'm really asking myself, is this a favorite? If they will play against a bigger team, I think they would lose and they would lose quite heavily. Maybe not if they play Portugal. And then we get to the performance of the evening. I mean, Spain against Italy ahead of the game, uh, you were expecting, both teams played well in their first game and you were really expecting that they might go toe on toe with each other, but within 10 minutes it was clear that there was only one way of this going. And it's all Spain. Spain have this accurate passing, they have really good passing speed in addition. Uh, it goes tap, 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 and then they have the wing play. They put crosses in, which they never did under Luis Enrique. And so there's a whole other threat there. And Nico Williams had an outstanding game. The only thing that was missing for him is the end product. And that's the, the one thing that I'm really worried about Spain, despite their um, defense being kind of so-and-so. But you know, if you put the opposition so much on the back foot, I think you don't have to worry that much about the defense. And yes, Una Simon as well. So those are for me the two weaknesses in the Spain squad. But if you dominate midfield like they did against Italy, boy, and Italy were really hanging on Donnarumma best player on the field in the first half I think there were great chances especially by Nico Williams and also by Lamine Yamal was there also one by Morata you know especially the Nico Williams header I really felt this has to go in that this went wide was a big ladder for all the Italians Italy didn't have a shot on goal until the 45th minute and that went wide by Chiesa whenever Italy went forward they quickly lost the ball I mean, in their own half, they probably could gain the ball sometimes, but as soon as they went into the Spanish half, they lost the ball again. And then when Spain attacked, I mean, it was usually last-ditch efforts for by the Italians. Italy were as bad as their jerseys. Or, I should actually put a spin on this, because I don't think it was Italy that bad. It was Spain being that brilliant. And Italy didn't know what to do. The only thing that really doesn't make much sense is that Spain only scored one goal and this is goal came from an own goal by Calafiori. Again, a cross in and Calafiori cannot get his feet sorted. It falls onto his knee more or less and into the, the net. If he doesn't touch it, the ball goes through. There's no Spaniard there. This was a completely unforced error. Must hurt a lot, but you can see, I mean, the ball takes a slight deflection so he cannot get his feet sorted. That's maybe the only thing that is really odd about this entire game. That it was only an own goal. It was also then odd then, you know, it's around the 70th minute, De La Fuente made a few changes and suddenly Italy got a little bit in the game and potentially could have gotten an equalizer. No, they was never in there. It honestly was needed. I mean, I was sitting and said, wow, it would be so great if Italy could get it equal because it would be so undeserved. And, you know, to get a little bit ahead of the Spaniards. But no, Spain did very well. And Spalletti in the pre-match press conference kind of said something along the lines, Spain, don't overestimate yourself. Well, Italy, don't overestimate yourself. Still think that this Italy squad is not that bad. And they may go potentially quarterfinal. 
but not much more than that. That's how I feel. And I have to say, I have not seen many better performances than what Spain have shown in the first two games. The only caveat is, are they peaking too early? But then Italy also peaked early in the last Euros and went all the way through. I can see Spain winning this one. I see only France at the moment who have a chance. I think even if Germany plays Spain, they will have no chance. This will look very much like a 2010 World Cup semifinal, my opinion. And with that win, Spain also win their group. So they're already in first place. So their first team where we have group winner and we know their slot in the knockout round. So that's also an added bonus if you would like. Other than that, the projections have not changed. I really feel that Slovenia could have used that win because, you know, if you need to get something from England, you have only two points, you're most likely going out and sitting in third place. And it's between Denmark and Serbia, a straight shootout. That's going to be interesting for sure. And then we have also the little matter of Italy against Croatia, where Italy just have to avoid defeat and they're through in second place. Seems doable, but this Croatia team is also kind of a thorn in the side of Italy historically. So. I'm with a little bit trepidation there, but I think with four points, Italy will move on regardless. Spain can rest everyone and maybe Albania have a little shot in there as well. Today, we have one game from Group E, Slovakia, Ukraine, the early kickoff. Again, this might not be a very enticing matchup, but given what Slovakia showed, Ukraine and the early kickoffs are usually good. I'm actually not sure if I will be able to watch it, but let's see that one. And then it's all. Group D, Poland, Austria, big one for me. I have a lot of trepidation around this game because Poland is probably the one opponent that doesn't really suit Austria that well because they're gonna give the ball to Austria and they have to be creative, so I'm not sure about that. And then Netherlands against France. Will Killian play with a mask? We already saw the mask in French colors. That will be the big question. Regardless, I think that France will beat the Netherlands with relative ease as they've done in qualifying as well. So yeah, please. Let me know your thoughts on the games yesterday and how you see the games pan out today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.